I tell you who else is amazing is Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, who is a retired uh, physician as well as uh, the founder and president of Health Watch USA. Dr. Cavanaugh, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, Jack. How was your, your weekend? Uh, it was very good, and I took up a hobby, too, called eating. I don't know if that's <laughs> good or not, but I seem to be very good at it also. Good for you. I I'm thought you said it. you were going to wear your mask at home, so you didn't do so too much didn't of that. So you did so much. Yeah. I know. That's right. that's right. Yeah, yeah, I have to do that, too. I know. There's a, <laughs> uh, a story out this morning online with a number of coronavirus cases surging in many parts of the country. There's talk of it being the second wave, but according to several scientists and experts, it ain't the second wave, it's still the first wave. So which is it? Well, I think it's still the first wave because we're seeing nationally maybe a second bump, but it's really areas that haven't been hit before getting hit with the first wave. And we're seeing spikes in a lot of the southern states. So it is concerning, especially with the planned rallies that are coming up, we need to be safe during those. And I understand that uh, in the governor's latest uh, address, which I think was Saturday, he said the uh, deaths in Kentucky were at 499. It's actually over 500 now, isn't it? I would assume so, yes. And uh, the Courier Journal says projecting historical rates of deaths of pneumonia. Uh, the, actually, the number may be closer to 1,200 if you include those. Well, that's correct. And what that is, is looking at historical data, how many people died of pneumonia over the years in Kentucky, and comparing it to how many people are dying of pneumonia this year. And that would, of course, this year include COVID-19 patients. And the excess deaths that they're coming up is just shy of 1,200. And so this is very concerning. This also comes after a Washington Post article, which was published last month, looking at just all excess deaths nationwide, same type of methodology. And there they predicted the United States hit 100,000 deaths from COVID-19 back in early May, and that we were underestimating the amount of deaths that we're having. So it is very concerning. This is the type of methodology, if you can remember, we talked about oh, about a month ago or so, because it is so difficult to establish causality that these large epidemics, they usually start looking at excess deaths compared to historical data. Very interesting. I read a story this morning about a guy in Seattle who uh, was in the hospital, let's see, 60-something days. Let me see here. I've got it. Let me see if I can find the specific number of days. Anyway, 70-year-old guy in Seattle. He survived coronavirus. 62 days in the hospital. Guess what his bill was? Um, let's see. If it's from the coronavirus, it's possible it was subsidized by the state. Otherwise, it okay. would maybe astronomical. Well, he got a bill for $1.2 million. $1.1 million. Whew. That is a lot. And, and that's, Jack, one of the reasons why we need health care reform. When we see all the social unrest in the United States, it's, I feel, really because lack of a social safety net. People are unable to participate in the American dream. Uh, they can work very hard all of their life, and they're still financially under the thumb and have really very little or if any options of retiring. And the health care is one of the most major issues. So I think that this is kind of the match that lit the powder keg. These type of issues need to be addressed by our leaders. I think uh, face masks are continuing to be of controversy. Well, they are with the public. They're not with the scientists. I think that pretty much most leaders, and I'll say most, there's definitely one that is still questionable, but most of the national leaders and also scientists feel that face masks are very important in breaking the epidemic. Now, as we've gone on, on record before, I don't feel that face masks are what you should rely on to keep you from getting the virus. You still have to social distance. You still have to have good hand hygiene and do things that very much follows the recommendations of our public health leaders. But face masks will help to prevent asymptomatic spread. 
And that is if you're carrying the virus and you don't know that, you may spread it to others. And that can occur in up to 45% of people who are infected with COVID. They don't know they have it. They may actually offer you some protection too, but don't rely on that. I mean, let's not get up next to someone who's uh, coughing or real close to someone just because you're wearing a mask. You still want a social distance. Give you kind of a false sense of security. Yes. It's not secure enough for you, but it's very good at stopping the spread of the virus. Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh, thank you so much, sir. We'll talk to you again on Wednesday. Thank you, sir.